so I'll just uh, give a short introduction to the SOS International and the research that we are doing, um, just to get a quick overview of our organization. So SOS International is an umbrella organization of student and youth groups working on sustainability. Currently, we consist of 30 member organizations and we run um, two projects ourselves. It's the, it's the Green Impact and the Green Office Movement. Um, the Green Impact uh, tries to forge and improve sustainability and universities by making um, closely collaborating with uh, the institution itself. The Green Office Movement is more a broader movement where we try to engage students having actual office at the university to support uh, the work of sustainability, both at the, uni at the uh, university as an sort of institution, but of course also the academic work. The aim of SOS International is then to collaborate, build network and strengthen the work of a just and sustainable transition. And the motivation for this global student survey was that we needed to understand um, students' attitude towards sustainability in education and jobs. And we wanted to be global. And then we would sought also to see how can we strengthen, strengthen and build ties across the world in terms of contacting and collaborating with student organizations from across the world. And these, these uh, results that we could get with we believe would be very crucial to inform educational institutions and policy in future work. And of course, we could be able to support our members and participate in their work uh, as they do at the local or national level. Okay. Just have a... Yep. So, and yeah, so why is the survey relevant? What we believe is that there's a huge knowledge gap of students' attitude towards sustainability. So we know that students have been engaged a lot in sustainability in general, but we don't have this vast overview of how a student's um, attitude to sustainability, particularly to the education and in job situations. And of course, we are aware that there are a lot of really interesting initiatives going on um, around the world, but we tried, we sought to sort of take this into sort of more global scale and then collaborate on something that we then could distribute. And another reason why this survey is relevant is sort of to leave action to a more sustainable education system. In, and by that create sort of a common understanding of the current status of how education and sustainability is relevant, but also strongly needed. Then of course, support the work of our, our student organizations and then also underlie the the global issue at hand. So um, we had a hypothesis that there might be sort of in a global tendency around the world, which is also something that our data suggests. Uh, thanks, Lena. So I'm just going to tell you a bit more about um, the research process itself. Um, so the survey um, that we were printing was online and it was available for respondents to complete between April and October 2020. Uh, that was quite a, a large uh, range, but it <laughs> came smack bang in the start of the pandemic. So um, we left it open longer to account for kind of the difficulties that organisations were having in promoting the, the research as a result of that, the changing situation. Um, we had over 100 um, higher education institutions and student organisations that were invited to be part um, of the promotion. Um, and we really recommended that those organisations follow quite neutral um, promotion to and avoid rec referencing kind of the environment and sustainability in their promotions, just to try and capture um, a broader perspective um, from respondents as possible and um, avoid solely focusing um, on those that might be kind of more interested in answering a, a survey about sustainability because that's their kind of existing prior interest. Also to help with capturing a, a kind of a range of opinions and perspectives, we did offer um, students um, the chance to participate in a prize draw um, as a result of completing the survey and we offered 10 100 euro or equivalent prizes 
um, and also offered organisations who were promoting the survey the chance to receive the data for their institutions and country if they received 100 responses or more. Um, over that period, we gained um, around 7,000 responses from students all around the world. Um, as you'll see, um, as I go through some of the key findings, um, the survey responses kind of uh, cover kind of some broad themes. Um, these are experiences of sustainability in education, um, the impacts of those experiences on um, students themselves, um, and then also asking students to reflect about on sustainability in their time after education and how that will influence their employability um, and career aspirations. And we also used uh, the survey as an opportunity to capture some perspectives on um, some of the kind of global issues um, that are kind of really um, at the fore at the moment, so climate change and some of the international sustainability um, action as well. Uh, so as I just said, I'm going to talk through some of the key research findings now. So first of all, um, it's probably worth just um, running through some of the characteristics of the respondents that we re um, received the survey. Um, so in terms of their demographics, um, around half were aged 21 to 24, um, almost two thirds identify as a woman, the vast majority, so 93%, are studying full time and almost two thirds are undergraduates. Uh, we also captured um, the respondent's nationality. Um, as you can see, um, our connections and um, membership is more focused uh, on Europe at the moment, and that's kind of reflected um, in the survey data that we uh, received. Um, but uh, we do hope to kind of run this research again in future and expand um, into kind of uh, in more depth into kind of other regions across the world so we can really build up this kind of global picture of what students are thinking and experiencing related to sustainability in their education. Um, so we had some um, quite a lot of Danes um, completing the survey, um, but as you can see, we did get representation from students from a range of different regions around the world. Uh, we also asked respondents what uh, country they were studying in. Going back to that point that Luna made about we wanting the data to be useful for kind of policy and campaigning um, and knowing that that happens on a national basis as well. So capturing the um, study country and region of the respondents was also important. Um, but like the previous slide, that's also kind of more um, heavily weighted towards European um, students. So moving on to their reflections on their experiences of sustainability in education. Um, this sl slide demonstrates that the respondents to the survey really want to see universities and college taking action on sustainability. Um, it's something that they want to learn about themselves personally. So 85% say it's something that they want to learn about. And there's that really strong expectation for their place of study to be taking action on sustainability. So 92% want to see their university or college actively incorporating and promoting sustainability. Uh, this is the, the kind of slide that um, Alina kind of captured your early thoughts on. So we asked the respondents to reflect on their kind of experience of their current course and how um, extensively sustainability has been covered um, within that course. And you can see that around 26% say that they've experienced fairly in-depth coverage and ranked at kind of four and five on the scale that we used. Um, but around 40% reported no or low coverage of sustainability in their course. We break that down in the questioning to look at uh, kind of various issues and themes related to sustainability. Um, and the most commonly reported issues are kind of on the left hand side um, of the slide here. So things like accountability and ethics, cultural diversity, human rights and health and well-being were reported as most commonly experienced um, in terms of the teaching that they'd um, received so far. 
um, and on the other end of the scale, the issues that hadn't really um, been focused on in their course um, included rural and urban development, biological diversity and nature, ecosystems and ecological principles and consumer consumerism, global trade and ethical trade. Again, still focused on their kind of experience of sustainability and education. Um, respondents suggested that there was room for improvement in terms of the kind of the action that their university has taken to limit its negative impacts on, on the environment and society. Um, so only kind of 46% agree that their place of study takes enough action uh, on these issues. Um, but also the scope for broadening the opportunities that are available to students to be part of that action so um, similarly around half only around half of the respondents say that um, the opportunities are sufficient um, at their place of study so that kind of is kind of shows some good, good progress um, if kind of half of respondents are saying that they that they're experiencing these opportunities and their place of study is taking action um, but still represents um, scope for improvement with to kind of get the other half of the institution to the institutions to um, join them on that journey. So the next few slides are focused on the impact of sustainability and education on the respondents. So we asked them to reflect on the impact that their studies were having on them personally in relation to sustainability. Um, and we found that 79% agreed that their studies are helping them learn how they personally can positively impact the world around them. Um, and when you, that kind of gets translated down into kind of individual lifestyle change, that drops to about 53% um, that um, are gaining that um, aptitude to kind of make change to their day-to-day -day life to help the environment through their courses. We wanted to understand kind of where in their kind of educational journey the student, the respondents were kind of being encouraged to think and act to help the environment and other people the most. Um, and you can see from this chart that um, kind of the university education is really key for kind of helping them to appreciate the kind of um, impact that they as individuals can make on environment and society. Um, which again kind of reflects on those previous points about how important it is for um, institutions to be taking action um, on these issues and providing students with opportunities to, to develop these um, competencies and skills. If we think now about um, sustainability in relation to their experiences outside of um, university when they um, graduate, um, this slide kind of presents uh, three questions, so I'll do a bit of explanation. Um, so we ask a question to respondents where they're presented with two choices, um, and in each case it's a um, choosing kind of their willingness to accept um, a salary lower than average to work for a company um, with a positive environmental and social record versus um, a salary higher than um, average to work for a company with a poor um, record. And this, this slide just shows the responses for um, the willingness to accept that salary sacrifice. Um, so on the left hand side of this slide, um, we're talking specifically about um, working for a company. Um, so the first two bars working from the left show the results for working for a company with a good environmental social record. And you can see that 90% of um, respondents said that they would be willing to make a 5% salary sacrifice. Um, and still two thirds say that they will make a 15% salary sacrifice to work for a company that has a good environmental and social record. Um, and if we now look at this um, bar on the right hand side, that's in relation to a specific role that contributes to positive and environmental, uh, positive environmental and social change. Um, and again, just under half are willing to make a 15% salary sacrificed for a specific role. Um, so you can see that kind of 
um, whilst they might not have the aspiration to work in a specific um, sustainability focused role, there is still a really a strong desire to work for organisations that have a positive record in, in these areas to the extent that two thirds are willing to make quite a significant salary sacrifice um, in order to work for such a company. Um, again, we asked to students and respondents to the survey to kind of drill down into those um, um, findings in a bit more detail. Uh, so we asked what factors they would consider when can, looking at their future career. Um, and these are kind of um, some of the most important factors. So whether it kind of suits them as a person individually and job security are kind of the top um, factors that um, people will take under, into account um, understandably um, but also there's that kind of real um, desire to work in a job that kind of uses the skills and it bears some relation to the course or subject that they've been studying. Um, least important factors were kind of flexibility and um, contribution to helping the environment and how re well respected the job is and the experience required and I think that kind of um, reflects the findings from the previous slide that whilst um, a smaller proportion might look to be involved in specific roles that um, contribute to the environment and um, society there is still that kind of desire to work for a company that has those values um, but also kind of bearing in mind that it's still 60% um, saying that they want they would take into um, consideration um, helping helping the environment. So just to move on to the final um, section uh, we also took the opportunity to ask um, this the respondents on their views on uh, climate change and um, some of the international sustainability initiatives that um, are taking place at the moment. Um, so the respondents that uh, to the survey showed really high levels concern about and demand for action on climate change. Um, so 90% 90 90 say they believe that governments from across the world should do whatever it takes to address climate change and also 90% have that con concern about the effects of climate change. Um, and that kind of trait translate to like personal impact as well. So 72% um, think that climate change will negatively impact uh, them and their lifestyle. And that kind of trans is really translated in, in that this following question. So we asked um, respondents to identify which word best describe their feelings about climate change and, and 75% chose worried out from that selection of words. And I think the final question that I'm going to present is just related to the sustainable development goals. Um, obviously, this is kind of quite a, uh, an international um, initiative related to sustainability. So we wanted to understand um, kind of the breadth of understanding and awareness of that initiative amongst this audience. Um, so you can see that almost half um, of respondents have heard of the SDGs and say that they know um, what they're about, um, which is positive, but also um, there's the remainder, <laughs> remaining half who aren't really sure what they're about um, or haven't even heard of them before. So there's still progress to be made there as well. Uh, and now I'm going to hand back over to Luna, who's going to talk a bit more about um, the SOS International view on uh, what the research is saying. Yes, so I will try to talk about sort of the perspective of the research and how we can utilise and apply the findings to sort of uh, real world uh, work that student organisations are doing, but also invite you to sort of questions and, and discussion afterwards what you Think could be um, relevant to to look into or that something any comments that you have in that regard yeah so how can we how can the results be applied and utilized to create a more sustainable education system one thing that we sort of believe is crucial is that doing campaigning which i think is a big work of a lot of student organizations 
is that uh, this survey and this data can be used to support the fact that students are currently not being educated for the future in terms of not being adequately equipped with knowledge and tools and critical mindsets to tackle climate change and sustainability issues. And therefore, we believe that this data can be sort of break down and analyzed in different ways to sort of support uh, campaign work and in this way be a lever for action. Then we will also like that, uh, hope that this, this work can be used for funding proposals. So having um, saying that this is the data and this is actually how students' uh, current attitude is towards sus uh, sustainability in the education system and then use this for conducting or for, um, uh, applying for funding proposals, but also uh, doing project applications and work within this data to say, okay, if we know that these gaps and these problems exist, how can we actually try to fill these, um, to fill this uh, knowledge and fill uh, these, um, so, and find solutions from, from this data. And then of course, individual analysis, our partners have access to the raw data they can conduct, conduct their own analysis in the local, regional, national work. And I think it would be really interesting if we could see some sort of comparison, looking more into the raw data uh, at the national or local level, say, are there actually crucial differences and what we see between, uh, between universities or between countries and what are also the similarities? So, so we can might build some partnerships across this using this data. Um, and then sort of the key takeaways, I think, for this presentation is that students want sustainability reflected in their education system. And currently this is not adequate. And then secondly is that students are worried about climate change and sustainability. And then can students consider sustainability in career options and are willing for some trade-offs. And then we will actually invite you to sort of a Q&A session. Um, Hopefully that you have some interesting reflection, comments, um, ideas of how we can go forward with this. It's all very welcomed. <laughs>